Good morning, folks, and welcome back to Wilderness Wargaming. This morning, we're going to talk about three ways to manage your peril when you're playing the Psyker, Psykinetic in uh, Darktide. All right, so the Psyker is the most unique class in Darktide, at least in my opinion. You don't necessarily need to use ammunition at all. Uh, you definitely won't use grenades. And in place of those, you get a resource called Perils of the Warp that kind of functions like ammunition for you. Now, this is pretty great because when you don't have to use um, grenades or, or ammo, you can leave those resources for your team members. Perils of the Warp um, is basically a percentage built up, not down. And when you get to the top, uh, to 100%, if you then use more, uh, your head explodes. Or at least you have like a, a massive headache since your character just goes down they don't like they don't die and go to the casualty screen or so uh, if you're not familiar with the tabletop game it is a tabletop mechanic as well when you're using psyker units that all right you got to manage this resource just like you do anything else you can be scared of perils uh, it can actually be useful but there's basically two approaches to it there are approaches where you want to keep the perils high and having higher perils helps you do more damage that's not what this video is about today this video is about for those people who are more comfortable keeping perils lower. Uh, I'm not going to try to evaluate which approach is better. I don't know. Uh, but if you are more comfortable playing with low perils, some of these tricks can really help you out. Okay, so number one is um, know staff. Know your staff. So right here uh, we have the Void Strike staff. Okay, this guy is kind of the, the sniper staff and it shoots, see how it shoots way out there. And it shoots a really long ranged bolt that does a lot of damage and explodes and hits things around it. Now also notice I get about 30% peril. That's from right clicking, holding down, fully charging the attack, and sticking it, it out there. Okay. Now this is this is a pretty good all around staff because it does a lot of things. It, uh, it it's very long range. And if you can get the you can't zoom in like a sniper, but you can make sniper attacks if you're good enough with the mouse. Um, you can hit things really far away. Um, number two is that burst effect in here. I'll show it again. They see that it's hitting things around it, so it, it has some anti-horde capability. Uh, but it also hits the primary target reasonably hard. If we hit uh, a heavy like this guy, see, we took over half of his health off with that, hitting him in the head. And even if we hit him in the body, okay, we still took an appreciable chunk off of that guy. Um, so it's good against both uh, large numbers of targets and against... Uh, against big single targets. Um, so know which staff you're using. This one is a very versatile staff. Now, there's one called the Trauma Staff. The first one you get, very similar to this one, except that it's secondary fire rather than um, than shooting out a bolt like that, just like the primary fire does. See, there's the primary fire. Um, that one caused an explosion on the ground. The first staff you get, it's it builds up a lot of, um, a lot of perils very quickly, so I would kind of stay away from that. We also have... Um, this guy here, uh, the Surge Force Staff, and this is another versatile one, okay, but see it has lightning bolts and it, it jumps to nearby targets, and we're building up perils fairly quickly there, okay, and we're going to calm them down, you press, if you haven't played before, you press R to reload, so you're reloading by lowering your peril. Um, this is reasonably good at both targets but it's going to be shorter ranged than the other staff okay so you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice some range if you decide to use this one you see we're hitting that guy okay but but we can't it, see how it won't go to those those farther targets directly in front of us it always wants to go to the closer ones okay and then you have um and i'm sorry i don't have an example of the trauma staff i did look for one this morning but there were none for sale um, you have this guy, the Pergatus Forge, and this one seems to be the most popular because this is like the flamethrower staff, okay? Um, this one is also shorter ranged and is very, very suitable for killing enemies up close, especially in large numbers. What it is not great for is killing big bruisers like this. I'll watch this. See that those tiny damage. Now, notice that he took that sudden big hit. That's not the staff. That's one of my abilities, which I'm going to get to in just a second. Okay, so know what your staff is for. If you are if you need to be able to kill things at long range, or you want to be able to do that, you're going to probably want to use the Void Strike because it 
is by far the longest range ones. Uh, and it's good against most types of targets. If you want to be clearing hordes with your, your staff, then uh, you probably want one of the other two. Uh, if you really want horde clearing, then this one, the, the flamethrower staff, is probably the best. You know, if you, if you pick the staff that does what you want it to do, uh, the one that clears hordes if you want to clear hordes with your staff, the one that snipes if you want to snipe, or the all-arounder if you just want an all-arounder, uh, then you can pick a melee weapon that does something different, and that way you can not um, be stuck with only only really one thing you can do and be wasting tons of perils building it up trying to attack targets that you're not very effective against. There's a couple things that you want to select here. So I, I use these all. So first of all, inner tranquility. This gives you straight up peril resistance per warp charge. Now warp charges are a thing you build up every time you brain burst something. Uh, that's your grenade type ability. Uh, and that's going to be part of this in a second. Okay, um, when you build them up, they enhance your abilities in other ways, depending on the other feats you, you select. But um, as you're brain bursting and building them up, you, you start getting peril slower because you have this warp peril resistance. The other one that's important is this one, Kinetic Flare. All attacks have a 10% chance on hit to brain burst the target. Now, this is really, not, obviously can't occur when you're up in the in the red zone at the very top, but it's it's otherwise it's very good. Okay. And this is why, is that it gives you basically free warp charges. Uh, when you saw I was attacking some the big guy with the, the flamethrower staff, and you saw him suddenly take a massive hit all out of the blue, that was this going off, uh, the 10% chance to brain burst. Now, when you think about the flamethrower staff is throwing out tons and tons of individual attacks. So for every one of those, it's computing that 10% chance to hit, and you're going to get that brain burst pretty quick. Um, this builds you up free warp charges, okay? Um, it also is a way that greatly enhances your damage. So it does greatly help the um, the flamethrower staff's ability to deal with larger targets and makes it uh, a lot more versatile than it otherwise would be. Uh, but but I digress. Uh, this one is critical because this is the thing. Watch this. Now, when we brain burst something, we're building, we're building, we're building. Boom. Now, look at that. We're already at 56% on perils. Okay, so we'll suppress it back down. And we have a warp charge down there at the bottom to the right of my health bar. You see that meter that's clicking down? That's the warp charge. And you'll see a little number there that indicates how many you've built up. But if we build out our staff here and we start doing this, let's build up. There. We got a brain burst right away. And we damaged a lot more targets. Now we have to wait the 15 second cooldown. But not only did we avoid that long cast time building up. Now there we go. We avoided that long cast time to build up the brain burst, and we got our free warp charge. And when we got the brain burst, we um, we were far, far lower on warp charge than we were when we do it in the, the grenade mode. See, this, this attack is what takes the place of your grenade. Okay, that was how we were at only 51% for some reason. But see, it, it builds up a lot. Those free brain bursts can really help you keep up your warp charges. And your warp charges do all kinds of great stuff, like I just expended them on my on my special ability and that I have another perk that enhances that. I'm not going to go over that right now. But if you can if you have that ability, that helps you minimize the amount of time you spend doing this sort of thing. And that is great because that builds up a ton of peril. And also it has that really really obnoxiously long cast time. And in game I find that a lot of times your target dies because somebody else kills it. Uh, before you're able to brain burst it anyhow, unless it's something really big. Um, okay, and then number three is this, this is the Force Sword. Um, this is, the Force Sword has a couple distinct advantages. One is you can block shooting with it like a Jedi Knight. Okay, now when you take shots, it'll it'll eat into your stamina. So I don't believe you can do it at 0% stamina. But you can. Now, the also, the sword allows you also to suppress perils when you are on your melee weapon. If you're not using this Force Sword, you can't do that. You can only suppress in this mode. Okay, so we'll build some up here. And then we suppress. Or we use the staff, build it up. There we go, there's a brain burst. And now we suppress. Okay, now if we oh, we'll build up again. Okay. We can suppress here with this sword. Now what we can do also with this sword is we can charge the attack. It's special abilities. We put warp charge in there, and bam. Now we get a really hard hit. Now, 
and it does a lot of damage. Uh, it, it's a very effective attack. But it builds up peril fairly fast, and it's only really useful against single targets. This won't help you at all against hordes. Um, and the other problem with it is that it is really easy, uh, if you're like me, to accidentally cast it at 100% when you meant to block and you just finger-triggered the wrong thing. And it, I have accidentally brain-popped myself more times with this sword than I can count. So one way that you can avoid doing that to building up that extra peril and having to deal with it is simply do not use the Force Sword. And you can pick one of the others. Now, the... the, the um, the Psyker Psychonet has access to a number of the weapons that everybody does. The different combat axes, the generic swords, uh, the chain sword here is one of my favorite. I really like the chain weapons on all the characters. But this one is a nice substitute. This is a unique one for the Psyker. Now, the dueling sword, I do not believe you can block shooting with it. You might be able to. I could be mistaken. Um, and it is not, if we look at the stats here, we will notice that it is not very high in terms of damage. Light attack is pretty low. Heavy attack is a lot more respectable. Uh, it does have a quick special melee attack. I'm not sure how damaging it is, but um, it's but it's very quick. Uh, it's not Notice it's not nearly as damaging as these some of these other weapons. Like the uh, combat axes, uh, even the regular sword is. But the dueling sword is super quick. So you are not dealing with any long charge-up times. Even the heavy attack is fairly quick for heavy attack compared. And notice, we are not building up any peril. Okay, it, so it is reasonably good against hordes. We can block stuff down. Boom, boom, get down there. Get him. Okay. And we can, we can chop stuff up pretty quickly. Now, if you're going over and you're dealing with... Um, where is that guy? There's a big guy over here, a mutant. Let's say a mutant. Heavy attack, boom. It's pretty pretty respectable. Three, four, five heavy attacks to kill that thing. And really, we could have probably finished it off with a light. How about this big armored guy? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that we, we dropped him pretty fast. How about this guy in carapace armor? Wow, that's brutal. Okay. See how effective that is when you're hitting something in the head on the, uh, this is the special attack, by the way. Notice we're not doing a lot to the carapace. Uh, even when, oh, but there we got through. That's, that's a special ability going on. But anyhow, because of its speed, that feet, you'll notice here, works on all attacks. It's not just your psychic attacks, or not just your staff, but all attacks. That allows us to quickly build up those, those, we're going to get one here pretty quick. There's going to be a warp charge popping up. There there it is. See? Warp charge popped up again. So it's a lot like the flamethrower staff in that way. That you can you can rack up those extra warp charges even while you're meleeing and not building any perils at all. Now the one thing we cannot do is this. Now if we go back to the sword. See, I'm pressing R. We cannot suppress our perils. We have to, we have to stay on the staff in order to suppress. Okay, that's the big sacrifice you're making. And I'm not sure that you can deflect shooting with that weapon. I don't know if there's a way to make the enemy shoot you in here to test it out. Um, so there's some trade-offs there. But if you don't use your melee to build up peril, you can use a lot more perils shooting your staff. So, uh, to sum up, if you if you are comfortable playing mainly, mainly with your peril very low, select your staff that's, um, that's going to do what you want it to do. Don't use it on inappropriate targets. Uh, number two, select your feats that are going to Help you keep your perils a little bit lower and are going to substitute for the need to use the brain burst ability more often than, than you have to. And number three, uh, select a non four sword melee weapon uh, so that you're not using perils as a resource to make your melee attacks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you back here at Wilderness Wargaming for more great comment. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and click the notifications bell and have a great day.